Yeah, I know, but the main part is the part yeah, you wrote about about him about jumping into action and actually taking yeah. his plan. Okay. Because I made I made undercover superheroes, uh, and then and I told him like, hopefully in a situation you'll do the opposite of what you see happening when someone's being bullied. Uh, so he literally did yeah, that on the bathroom wall. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. I guess I'll. <laughs> Maybe some eyebrows. <laughs> Stop. You know those fake. You know the mustaches, the yeah. fake mustaches that people have. My buddies cut that in half one time and put them on, and they put them on like this. So I looked like super angry the whole entire time. I think we should just take some some lipstick and. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, can we at least get like brown? Guys, this is fun to do. So okay. it's, it's so. fun to Hi, sweethearts and heroes family. My name is Miss Ralston. I'm the Key Rushford Middle School principal, and this is my lab. Welcome, Rick, Tom. Katie Ralston, Tom Murphy here, Sweethearts and Heroes family, one of my all-time favorite schools. Katie's been yes. with us for years now. And Katie's got some of the best stories because she's one of the best principals. She pays attention. She makes connections with kids. And we got a couple pillars that we talk to teachers about all the time. One of them is the reverse professor Xavier. What is that? It's taking those normal kids and helping the kids that maybe other kids see as mutants. That's a tough thing to say, but a lot of kids feel like they're different. And one of your roles is to take those kids that are normal and get them to help other kids. And you have a beautiful story that talks about the immature brain and things that kids do and how you and taking the Sweethearts and Heroes kind of mindset and your own mindset and the, the climate and the culture that you have to get kids to jump into action to become superheroes. Give us that amazing story. Absolutely. So I meet with groups of students individually, 10 students at each grade level, because the principal, the teachers, adults in the building can't be everywhere all the time. Specifically the cafeteria, the gym, the locker room, the bathroom, always in the hallways. So we choose 10 to 15 undercover sweethearts and I explain to them you know there's issues going on I don't even need to tell you who it's with I just need you to be aware I need you to be mindful and when you notice that somebody's doing or saying something to or about someone else I need you to be able to do the opposite and I've chosen you because I know you can do that and kids love that they you know they feel empowered they like that they can be that superhero they like that they can make that difference so probably the best story Someone came in, told me something was written on the bathroom wall. Specifically, it said, Calvin is stupid and not funny and no one likes him. <clears throat> so, thanks for reporting this. I went to the bathroom to see what was on the wall. And it was crossed out and written <laughs> under it. It said, actually, that's not true. Calvin is smart and funny and has good friends. Brennan. So, Brennan signed his name. <clears throat> took charge, jumped into action to stand up for Calvin right on the bathroom wall. So I called Brennan into the office. Brennan, I have to talk to you. Do you know why I have you in here today? He said, yeah, it's because of what's on the bathroom wall. Right, tell me about that. Did you see what I did? Aren't you glad? That's what you want me to do, right? <laughs> the opposite of everything that's, that's being said against him. And I was like, yeah, that is what I want you to do. I didn't really think it was going to be on the bathroom wall. So next time... How should we do this differently? Ideas? He said, oh, I shouldn't write my name next time. <laughs> so really, it didn't occur to him that you shouldn't write the opposite on the bathroom wall. He just knew he had to stand up for Calvin, <laughs> do the right thing. So I really was very proud of him for that. It, you know, that takes guts. So The immature brain does amazing things, doesn't it? Rick, what Absolutely. do you got, man? It's a hilarious story. He signed his own name. Yeah, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's great. So today when we spoke to your students, we spoke to the 7 through 12 on cyberbullying. Yes. And, you know, this was written on the wall, physically written on a wall. Mm -hmm. I mean, how often do you see something like that on a wall? Not that often. But somewhere you see that all the time is online. Snapchat, all the time. Facebook. Kids see it everywhere. And what are they doing about it? 
Not a whole lot. How often do you see that kid writing, actually that's not true. Kelvin is smart and funny and has good friends. Never. Not often enough. They need to be able to jump into action. Online. Online as well. And write that kind of stuff. Jump into action and be that guy's or that kid's sweetheart. Or that girl's sweetheart. Because they need them. They need. We need more sweethearts online. There's not enough of them. And what Brennan did there could have done online to those people that he sees being bullied and changing their lives by doing that for them. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that it was on a wall and it can happen all the time online. And it's funny, you know, I'll end this by saying this, that we know that people that endure cyberbullying are three to four times more likely to make a destructive decision. And Rick's famous for saying, we need three to four times more sweethearts and heroes online. So here we go, Katie Ralston's lab, in the lab with Katie Ralston, Cuba oh, Rushford, we're gonna blow it up. Okay. Boom. Boom.